What's a name that seemingly disappeared from the web overnight? Nice try, BuzzFeed. Since BuzzFeed embeds Tumblr posts right into their articles often, Tumblr users have taken to editing their posts, upon learning they're in an article, demanding to be paid royalties with lines if giant, bold, disruptive text. It's great lol. John Titter, must be the work of the organization. Got I, I remember back when I used to know him. Charlie Sheen, he's doing very well these days. He quit all drugs and started living a healthy life. I guess that's not that interesting. So people stopped caring. I mean, with that career track, he could someday play Iron Man. Boxxy, she'll be 30 next year. Store there is dead. Images link is dead. And the forum is just, there. Dane Cook, so, Dane Cook pretty much had all of his money stolen by his brother and had to start from scratch. He did an awesome interview on Your Mom's House podcast where he discusses this and what the hell happened to him and basically why he blipped off the face of the planet for a while. If I recall correctly, it was his brother manager who did the stealing. If a legal battle isn't painful enough, imagine having your sibling steal millions from you. Oh. And imagine this all happening shortly after losing both of your parents to cancer, poor bastard. Tom MySpace. After he sold MySpace he just decided to chill and travel the world taking pictures. Yet this makes him by far the most relatable tech personality I can think of. Sold for 580 million dollars. Retires and lives his life comfortably filling his life with his favorite people and hobbies. Typo. Tibuscus. I ain't heard that name in time like for a long time Lomeo. I swear he was like on track with PewDiePie at a certain time with them both being the fastest growing YG channels. I could be wrong though since that was a while ago and that's basically the last time I heard of the guy. Jeeves. I have no idea who to ask about this one. Alexa. Probably. I asked Jeeves to show me boobs when I was 12. RIP Jeeves and my innocence. FPS Russia. Two reasons for this. Quick copy from Wiki. Death of Keith Ratliff. On the 3rd of January, 2013, a Kentucky man named Keith Ratliff, the co-owner of FPS Industries, a custom firearms fabrication and testing company, and a member of the FPS Russia production team, was found shot dead in his home in Carnesville, Georgia. 18, 19, 20. Ratliff held a federal firearms license, FFL and was responsible for obtaining the firearms used in the videos. 21. Following Ratliff's death, the production of FPS Russia's videos went on hiatus until the 19th of February, 2013.22. In March 2013, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, GBI, said it was still investigating. 23. However, as there have been no official updates since the initial reports following Ratliff's death, 24. The case has become the subject of numerous conspiracy theories. 25. ATF raids. On the 29th of March, 2013, Myers Franklin County residents were searched by upwards of 40 members of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives alongside officers from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. The investigators also searched Myers' father's nearby farm, a frequent filming location for FPS Russia. ATF spokesman Richard Coe said the justification for the search was that, Myers, was using explosives and getting paid for it via YouTube. 26, 27, in August 2017, Myers' residence was again raided, 28, by ATF and GBI agents, 29, after Myers was alleged to have received 25 grams of butane hash oil through the mail. The Department of Justice prosecuted on the grounds that illegal drug possession while owning a firearm is a federal offense. Myers was arrested for felony possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute and 50 of his weapons were confiscated under Section 922, G, 3, of the Gun Control Act of 1968, which prohibits illegal drug users from possessing firearms. He later pleaded guilty to possession with intent to distribute marijuana and butane hash oil with all other charges dismissed. 30. On the 19th of June, 2019, Myers was sentenced to two years probation and two months in prison, which he served later in 2019, as well as a fine in the amount of $7,500. Since his release from prison, 
Myers has spoken about the case on his YouTube podcast Painkiller already. Lol dude went down for pot in the mail of all things. After he already had his house raided by the ATF. I've you've been raised by the ATF. Best believe they're looking at all your mail. Collegia humor. And the old cracked website with silly articles. Oh and Tumblupen. Man. College humor. Dorkly and cracked were my three go to websites for content before I got into Reddit. They were killed by Facebook. Facebook lied to them about how many views they were getting which led to them going bankrupt after focusing on making content for Facebook. College Humor still makes some stuff but it's not really got any budget. And all of the cast members were let go but often return as freelance workers. They still do those CEO videos and I think they are still making their DND show on their streaming service. Cracked was sold to Scripps, a huge media company, who vastly overpaid to cut costs. They sacked all their staff except for David Wong. They literally came to the office one morning to a notice on the door you don't work here anymore. David kept it going for a bit with contract writers, but eventually even he was sacked, after he shut the forums down with zero notice so they couldn't back them up. A lot of the best writers are still around doing their own thing a few formed Modern Rogue which is doing well on its own. Cracked had some of my favorite content for years. It was tragic to see it fall apart the way it did. There are several places to find former cracked writers making great content check out small beans. Game fully unemployed. 1900 hot dog. And the podcast quick question with Sorin and Daniel. David Wong is still writing books. But his latest will be the last under that pen name. It's just Jason Pargin now. That affluent's a kid who killed a few people. Got off and then fled to Mexico with his mother. All I recall about him is that they were caught by ordering Pizza Hut, I think. The judge in that case should lose his seat. Can you imagine a lawyer say look, he tried to aria a 14 year old a couple years ago, and nothing was done about, so he thinks he can get away with anything. The best way to teach him that this is not true is to let him get away with killing people while driving drunk. Then he'll learn that he has to answer to his actions. Judge. Sounds good. No jail time. Ethan Couch. And now he's out driving again. Couch was rearrested on the 2nd of January, 2020, accused of violating his probation. Couch was booked into the Tarrant County Jail. According to court documents Couch tested positive 40 HC in a mandatory drug screening that was part of his probation. Couch was released one day later, on the 3rd of January, 2020, because authorities could not determine if the positive test result 40 HC came from illegal marijuana or cannabidiol oil. It must be nice to be rich enough to break the law. Sorry, have decent lawyers. Anybody remember the kid in Australia who had a crazy party that disrupted his whole neighborhood and then acted unbothered wearing his sunglasses on the news? I'll say I'm sorry but I won't take my glasses off. Corey Worthington I think his name was, was close. Corey Worthington, writing on his MySpace and MSN accounts, we told you to cast your mind back. Corey wrote, parents away, tell your mates, you don't want to miss it, it's gonna be huge, sick, my nostalgia is kicking into high gear, this guy lived around the corner from me at the time, he is still pretty famous for it, like a suburban C grade celeb, I'm still unsure why he became so famous, but I assume it was the glasses and bleached hair. 95% of Taco Bell's menu items, seriously what's going on, for real, I want my empanadas back. Taco Bell. I think Taco Bell just went so extreme in streamlining simplifying the menu that they went overboard. Now most of what they have is just a remix of the few basic ingredients that they have, so most of the food is going to taste the similar no matter how much you mix the same items. Right before covered it, someone convinced me to go to a Taco Bell cantina in downtown Chicago. They had a handful unique items to the menu and unique freeze flavors. It was hands down a 100% better experience. After the Mexican pizza got removed from the menu I stopped going to Taco Bell. Thanks for the gold fellow Mexican pizza aficionado. I do not understand why, but the Mexican pizza folks are dedicated. They worship at the altar of the Mexican pizza. To them, the MP is Taco Bell. This was true in the 4th grade. It is true now. That one net neutrality guy, Arjit Pai, not if you sort by top posts all time on different subreddits. Optimum, I can picture a clickbait link saying, 
you'll never guess what Optimum's kids look like now. I saw something on the news about Optimum's kids a few years ago. They all seem genuinely happy and loved. Octoda took up the torch magnificently though. Ray William Johnson. I actually met him a few years ago. He had a storage unit with us. I saw his ID and his name looked familiar. Then it hit me. He's getting big on TikTok where doesn't have to worry about copyright strikes. Used to love equals 3 along with Julian Smith videos way back then. Those were the days. I made this for you. Epic meal time. I liked them for maybe a year or so. But the joke wore off quickly. There's only so many times they can make a bacon castle or sausage car or sandwich made of 80 other sandwiches. And still be funny. The fact that Muscles Glasses is now a vegan is the most shocking character development of all times. What the f? That's crazier than Steve-O's character twist. He had a pretty big falling out with the main guy behind Epic Meal Time, right? T was years ago at this point but I recall one of the main guys being on a podcast, H3 I think, where he mentioned that they shifted their focus to Facebook because it became more difficult to earn money on YouTube. They just started editing old episodes to make them super short with text overlays to explain what was happening so it was way easier to digest. They would upload those shorter clips to their Facebook page for followers to see and it started making more money than the YouTube channel ever did. I remember this as well. They had a few really huge YouTube videos and started escalating their meals, but very quickly ran out of new ideas. After a couple years their videos just felt really forced and honestly a little sad. I still see one every once in a while and it seems like they just don't care anymore. Makes sense though. Those videos were very appropriate for the time period they were released and they have so many views that it assumed those guys are set for life. This goes back a ways, but Gary Condit. I remember listening to 9 stroke 11 coverage with people at work and saying man, Gary Condit is pretty happy right now. Gary Condit Chandra Levy was the top story on the news on the 10th of September. 2001. 24 hours later, the other big story on 9 stroke 10 was the McDonald's monopoly scandal, that got completely forgotten the next day. Tyler Tequila. That's what happens when you play the gathering of the jugglers and they throw literal shat you. She thinks she's a literal god now. Got super into some kind of cult mentality. She got a major head injury and became an artsy, which is some radical character development. She also admitted that being B was all for the purpose of the show I think. Can't remember where I heard it. Fred with a backwards R. He had that Nick movie with John Cena, maybe several IDK, and then bam, disappeared by the Yautab Mafia. Lucas Cruikshank, the guy who created and played Fred, has his own eponymous YouTube channel with 3.25 million subs. His younger brother Jacob also has a channel and they've been collabing together a lot lately. Tazon Day. Dude follows me on Twitter and I have absolutely no idea why. It happened like 4 years ago and I'm scared to ask him why. But scared I'll get unfollowed. Some stay dry while others feel the pain. Daddy05. Apparently the three boys are still doing videos but Emma and Cody have, deservingly so. Poor kids. Disappeared from the internet. I'm glad their lives aren't basically being filmed and put onto the internet for content. Especially those pranks. Sometimes I wonder how Emma and Cody are doing and whether they'll ever come back to the internet. Possibly to talk about their experiences, but I just hope they are doing good. Emma and Cody have been living with their mom full time. Good riddance to that pose. He deserved worse than he got. Lil Tay. Didn't she get her mom fired for posing on her boss's car? If I remember right, her mom was a realtor and she used a client's house to shoot a video. She will forever live on in that one Eminem lyric from Killshot. Feel like I'm babysitting Lil Tay. That Momo doll thing. Oh right. That existed. Huh. And Charlie. Charlie with the pencils. Matt Lower. Number one highest paid man on TV. His first episode cameo in Kimmy Schmidt has aged in an interesting way. I'm always amazed at what women will do because they are afraid of being rude. Tina Fey knew. They'd write it off as a coincidence. But they did also make a joke alluding to Bill Cosby's RS on 30 Rock back in like, 2011? Last thing I remember was him being in a practical jokes war with Ellen DeGeneres. What happened? Not from USA. From what I remember he was fired for sexual harassment and maybe assault against his female co-workers. Cicada 3301. I watched the Limino video on that ages ago and still think about it to this day. 
So interesting how something anything, based on the internet, can stay so secret. This is easily the most fascinating answer among all of these. If you don't know what Cicada 3301 is look it up on YouTube. It's a wild ride. Connie. Someone spray painted Connie 2012 at the local park like two weeks ago. Someone out there remembers. Everyone was dead set on stopping this guy. And then the Hunger Games came out and no one cared anymore. The internet historian also made a video about it that narrates it in great detail. I swear that affair has done invaluable efforts to preserve internet history. Truly a legend. Chuck Norris. Specifically Chuck Norris jokes. WTF happened to those? They turned into shaggy jokes. The annoying orange. Certainly not Barbara Streisand. Blackberry Messenger. BB Empin. Shane Dawson's career went south in a big way. Never really understood why he was popular to begin with. I remember stumbling across a long video covering the downfall of Shane. All I knew was the cat thing before that. He was really a shy person. Wait, what happened to him? Out of the loop here. He's done so many creepy things throughout his career. I remember seeing a video of him and his mom chatting with a teenage girl on Omegle and he tells her to twerk. I think there were a lot of factors that lead to his popularity. When kids and teenagers go online, they tend to go towards what they are familiar with. I think with Shane Dawson, they related to the depression and the random bursts of energy. Very common in that age group. When you like someone, you subconsciously don't want to see the bad in them. You just internally grimace and hope that it goes away really soon. When you add young people into the mix who don't have a fully developed brain, you're much more likely to find people like Shane Dawson and Anish and rise to fame. I am very proud of these kids for finally seeing through the BS. Ken M. Yahoo shut down their comments section. He moved on to Facebook comments and posts regularly on Twitter. His tweets are rarely as funny as the Yahoo comments though. Leafy is here. Because didn't he get banned from like every buy platform? Came back for a bit and had nowhere near the same following. Cause he didn't exactly do the same content. Even if he did, he'd probably get taken off the platform. Iggy Azalea. She was seemingly everywhere for like a solid year. She was on so many ads and started hosting sh. Then the internet just collectively stopped listening to her. A random Iggy Azalea song popped into my head about a week ago. And I know it hasn't been that long but her whole career seemed like a fever dream that everyone woke up from ages ago. She was on the celebrity dating game recently. So yeah, her career took a dive. Left Shark. Left Shark is also in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Long life Left Shark. Just went there for the first time about a month ago. I was not expecting to round a corner and see Left Shark. Now we just have Baby Shark. Legend 27. Some Legend 27s never die. The Legend 27. Slender Man. Especially after the 2014 stabbing. One of the girls is going to be released soon. First time I'd heard of the case in years. Just rewatched the documentary on HBO. Super sad case. Slender Man is just a modern folktale. Everyone knows who he is but nobody really cares. Just like everyone knows who the Tooth Fairy is. Unidon. Fing Jackdaw's Man. The Hamster Dance Song. There was a time when you would hear that all the time on the radio. And would even play in kids films. Then. All of a sudden. Nothing. Zika. It was terrible when it started. The whole planet was freaking out and then it vanished. It's endemic here in Brazil. Less worse than Dendi. Team 4 Star. Once they announced they weren't going to be doing any more DBZA, their subscriber count plummeted. They aren't gone, but they definitely ain't as popular as they used to be. The reasons were legit. Burnout. Trying to get the DBZ creator's approval was becoming harder once Super came out, and the like. But it was literally the one major thing people came to their channel for. It's like if Pizza Hut stopped making pizzas. Back in 2010 in the British YouTube vlog community there was a lad called Charlie Skies. Charlie was friends with the likes of Amazing Phil and such and he just disappeared. Vanished. Poof. Clippy. Microsoft went and slashed him. Elian Gonzalez. Clowns. You mean the ones that were everywhere back in 2016? Weird times. Man. Dad boy. Oh sh what up. What happened to Fred? He grew up. So did his fans. He's still around and posts videos as his real self and seems to be doing really well. 
Maddox. Whatever happened to that guy, when I think of how it was possible to get really famous just by being around on the internet in the late 90s very early zeros, I think of Maddox, I still think he's funny, but I know a lot of people who are funny who could never build that kind of online presence with the kind of competition that exists today. His fame was such a product of that weird frontier era of the internet. Adrian of Adrian's Kickback Basically the story is this kid named Adrian and his friends sent out invites to their school for his birthday party in Huntington Beach. People from that school sent out other invites to their friends and it eventually went viral. Over a couple days over hundreds and thousands of people were saying they were going to go. People even traveled across the country to get there. 2500 people showed up and since the party was meant to be small there was nothing to do so a riot broke out and tons of shad the beach was destroyed. Adrian never showed up either by the way. He got in a lot of trouble but became an instant celebrity. Everyone was waiting for the next party. Then in about a week everyone moved on and his fame died down fast. I followed him on IG and he would do accessional liver streams. His view account went from 20k to 65 in a month. Time on the internet moves fast. I had never heard of this so I went ahead and googled it. This was less than 3 months ago. I know that I don't have a TikTok so I'm out of the loop when it comes to things pertaining to that app but dude. What the F. Where was I? Definitely not Adrian's kickback in HB. That's for damn sure. Lol something like this happened in my country. There was this Isabella girl who invited the president to her. I think 14th. Maybe 16th. IDK birthday it went viral and there was a facebook event called isabella's birthday i don't remember how many people showed up or how it went down but everybody knew about it my drunk kitchen hannah hart she was everywhere on the internet for a few years and then poof i liked her content kind of the same vein but tyler oakley too she still is making videos has over 2m subscribers that's the funny thing about disappearing being really popular for a minute is just a net you catch the people that want to stick around, and then let the other ones go. Sigh. He has a pop company now. He started a record label, P Nation, a couple years ago.